Hello everybody, I'm Duke James. This is Vijayanagar. Vijay no, it's not Vijayanagar. No, I'm gonna do knowledge sharing with Vijayanagar. So they give me 18 ducks a month for commercialization. I don't believe they can actually embrace commercialization. Oh no, they're gonna okay, so they'll get a little bit of commercialization, 0.36 per month. So they're not gonna get enough of that to actually embrace it. I don't think it really matters all that much, because their mill tech is 41, even without commercialization. So even if they got commercialization, I mean, they're still ahead of time. So they'll give me 18 ducats a month for that. I went ahead and I got these uh, four provinces, like I said I would. I'm going to go ahead and sell this province to Banu Kaab. They'll pay 220 ducats. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, have them transfer trade power to me. Yeah, four countries would transfer trade power. Kerman, Hazrasp, and Azuran. And these guys, but they didn't appear on that list for some reason. I'll take trade power from all of those countries. Well, not Hazraspid. Hazraspid is a one province country, so to have them take up a transfer trade slot, there's no hard cap on transfer trade, but the more people you have transfer trade to you, the less other countries are willing to transfer trade to you, so I don't want to use one of those on Hazaraspid to give me their zero trade power. Their 0.25 trade power. Looks like Butua fully annexed every country in this area. I'm going to go ahead and improve relations with them. Fortunately, I can't ally them. I'm allied with Burundi. I think Burundi is better than Butua because they have higher population. I should still be able to influence. I already influenced them, actually. To proclaim a guarantee. Royal marriage would take a slot. So I don't want to do that. I rebuilt most of my army. 30,000 troops. I think I had 40,000 before. I think it was like 37,000 actually. So I'm mostly there. My manpower right now is 40,000. My manpower pool. So at 30,000, I have about 9,000 troops in that pool. I think I'll hold at 30,000. It's split it into like a 10 and a 20k stack. Until I get this. Which... Actually, in about three years. My war exhaustion is kind of high, so I'm probably not going to do anything for a while until that goes down. So I'll probably just wait for this reform. And then hopefully that reform gives me a lot of manpower. And then I can build up a um, much larger army. Yeah, this province now, with Irrigation Rank 4, makes about 800 ducats from food, and produces about 776. This was producing 900 units of crop at one point, so it did decrease. 
I'm putting money into the farmlands, but it keeps dropping. So I'm not really sure why. I wonder if it's because if I own it, it drops, and that's what the nerf to state-owned property was. It decays faster. Or it just decays in general. Please don't take my province. And I was able to get a province completely pissed Japan off. There's really no going back from that. I don't particularly need this money, but even if I was making 100 ducats a month, that would be five months worth of, of income. And I'm only, well, I'm making 73 right now. It's not a particularly good province. Um, Portugal kept their provinces, so maybe Japan just really doesn't want to attack anybody. Who are they allied with? Tangzia, which sounds like a country that's somewhere over here. So that it says I don't. Oh no. Okay. That flag. I thought that flag was grayed out. Like I hadn't discovered that country yet before. They have twenty six thousand troops. Japan has one hundred twenty six thousand troops. I actually don't think Japan would attack me. I have thirty thousand. Vijayanagara. Vijayanagara has one hundred four thousand. So right there we have pretty much on par with them, and that's not including the Mamluks and Ethiopia. So I guess I'll probably just keep that province. I'll just send all my expeditions to Japan, and then I'll just take over Japan through expeditions. <laughs> okay, probably not. I can only get the uh, smaller provinces. I'm not going to get a, a 35 development province through an expedition. Although they are, Japan is Miltech 32, so you can start getting a little bit more higher developed provinces the more tech disparity there is. So maybe I would be able to grab a couple of those. No, stop becoming tributary states of Katanga. We went through this already. There was a coalition war against them. So this is the uh, this is the war of the pygmies, like after World War One. It's just the little guys. They're going back to their their former master. All right, I'm going to take Admin Tech Thirty Eight, which allows another idea group. And go ahead and grab Grand Fleet. Before I take the first idea, I just want to make sure. Wait, no. Okay. Can I build heavies now? It's giving me this list, so that's making me think that I can build heavies. With the exception of closed waters like the Mediterranean, the Man of War, blah blah blah, Western nations get access to ships automatically, other nations can build them if they westernize, have the Grand Navy Idea Group, or if they both have Western arms, trade modifier, and naval ideas. So it gave me the list, but it doesn't actually give me the ability to build. I'm going to wait for the new year. See if it's like on a tick basis. If it um, doesn't give me the ability to build them, then I'm going to just assume I need to actually put in points. I just think it's kind of weird that they gave me the ability to see that list. All right, well, I have troops over here, so I might as well help these guys out. They apparently have no troops. No, they have 6,000 troops somewhere. 
Apparently I am the only country in the world with Grand Fleet ideas, though. It's kind of funny. Two-decker. If I don't do Grand Fleet, then I would have locked them at Tech 54. That's 14 tech levels away, so I just think that's pretty far away. I can start fighting now if I build a ton of heavies. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to actually put in points. That's fine, but I'll, I'll still wait for the next year. Ooh, we have exhaustive drilling. Interesting. Despite my arm magician being really bad. I get 0 0.31 from fully maintained forts, so the problem with being a, a coastal country is you don't really need forts. So there's not a lot of strategic places that you could stick forts. I'll have a fort on this province. It's doing a little bit of trade. Oh yeah, I could fight these guys. I don't think they have allies with anybody. Yeah, they're not allied with anybody, so I'll send... I'll send this stack over there. So many men are going to die just in this. 24? No. Well, there's no monthly tick. So how many men are going to die on this trip? I think it's every, every C zone they enter. Yeah, every C zone they enter, people die. Like 3,000 men died in that 24-day trip. That is crazy. All right, let's eliminate uh, the Maldives. That's in the Konkan. I got another Japanese province. I think taking that should give me the ability to colonize this province. And this province is in the Tamil Cam node, so that would be my stepping stone to the Tamil Cam node province. Castile took Sado. My other province is the one that uh, borders Portugal's provinces. Portugal also took another province, so everybody is carving up Japan. Which is the opposite of what happened in the real world. Except for what, one province? Was it Nagasaki was given to the Portuguese, and then there was Do Dojima, so, uh, an island that uh, the Dutch were able to trade at? After Nagasaki was taken, because I think the Portuguese had Nagasaki for like 40 years, and then they lost it. They, it was taken back. That Daimo lost their power. And the Shogun took it back. So only the Dutch were left to trade in that one little island. Which I think it was an artificial island. Or just about. I 
All right, yeah, I can't build anything. So they just gave me the, the list threw me off because this would th make me think that I have instant access to it. I assumed I had to put points into it anyway. But that list just threw me off. What about now? All right, this first idea gives 20% increased. Not sure if that actually updated, but it went from 251 to 266, so it might have updated. I should put some ships over here. I'll split this stack into two for now. I don't want to build too many light ships because I do want to build a bunch of heavies, like at least a hundred heavies. Building those uh, 190 provinces and uh, two there, that's good. Maybe not a hundred, probably like 50 to start with. Because I'm just thinking, eventually I will try to fight Ming. Now I assume Ming would send troops over here. And I'll just lose those provinces. That's fine. If it is a blockade CB war, then... I could just blockade them. They wouldn't be able to send troops to any of these provinces because I would be able to destroy their navy and I don't think they would get over here assuming I'd be able to defeat them navy defeat their navy I think that would give me enough uh, war score because a trade war is CB Trade conflict CB. Is there anybody I can actually get a trade conflict CB on? Castile, probably. England, anybody? Yeah, I should be able to get one on England. So I'll go ahead and just get one to see what that. It's. No. I don't know why I'm thinking it does something else. That is just you blockade their ports, and then you get war score from blockading their ports. That's all that really does. I don't know, I was thinking for a second that you get um, war score from winning naval battles, but that CB doesn't exist. It's like it would be a Holy War CB, but on the uh, high seas instead of... On land. Alright, we can do this once I have 150 mil points. Probably shouldn't have grabbed that. That's fine, I'll take the next dip tech. Global ship trade power, max colonial range, trade range, naval engagement. So that should help out my navy a little bit. Yeah, Ming has 60 heavies, 89 lights, 148 galleys, 34 transports. Actually not as much as I would think that they would have with 1.4 million troops. It's the galleys that's the problem. If I don't fight their navy off their own coast, then that's fine. And if I actually have a navy that can defeat their navy, I would take 
Taiwan from Castile because they might declare war for those provinces. They don't want them now, but then they potentially could declare war for those provinces. If they don't have a navy to actually get there, then I could prevent them from... I could get war score from holding those provinces. They do have naval ideas, so they do get that bonus from fighting off their own coast. Potentially that could bring about some problems if they land troops using the Taiwan Strait, they would be fighting off their own their own coast, so something to keep in mind. Katang has taken territory back from the Timurids. Going right back to where they were before. They still have a lot of aggressive expansion with these countries, so they'll probably just end up right back into a, another coalition war with the rate they're going. Alright, so I got this uh, trade conflict CB against England. I'm not going to actually use it, but I was thinking of the other trade conflict CV. There's two trade conflict CVs. One of them is uh, this one, which is 100% cost for everything, which is kind of worthless. I guess if you just want some cash, a little bit of cash, uh, you could do that. But the other one is um, from embargoing a country, you get a CB. That's the one that's 50% off for money and war reps. That's the one that I would want to use. Alright, I've eliminated the Maldives. That should get me in range to colonize this once it's um, fully cored. I hate that religion pop-up. Call for peace. I just did peace. Go away. Should be able to do this once I get to 150, which should be a couple months. Oh, hey, would you look at that? I can build heavy galleons. 21 ducats per, so... Looks like I got these light ships completed. Did I build 10? Or 8? I built 8. Alright, I'll just go ahead and send them over to Asia. That was 61%, 8.3, 51 51%, 4.6. Okay, I have no, no ships protecting over here, so I'll go ahead and just send them over there. And then... I'll build... In all of the provinces that are sub 400 days. About 10. These cost 0.31 per month. So 100 of these would cost 31 ducats per month. I'd have to be, uh, I'd have to, I'd have to be fighting Ming every time that CB ends to, to justify that. I think they definitely nerfed 
the amount that ships cost. Because I don't remember Caravels costing like 0.2 and Heavies costing 0.3. The problem is I'm not sure if a hundred ships would get the job done against Ming, hundred heavies. I think that would be close, because they have 60 heavies themselves. Grand Fleet doesn't give a particularly great navy. Because we both have naval ideas, so we both share that stuff. This just decreases costs. I guess the the finisher does give heavy ship cost negative fifteen percent, which should reduce the maintenance. It does give an extra land leader shock, and then it does give a, a flat naval maintenance modifier reduction as well. Decreases morale hit when losing a ship. Yeah, we'll see. I'll build at least 50, you know, just to have 50, because then I could fight, like, Majapah hit with that. Hey, here we go. Two stability. 150 mil points. Let's go ahead and do this. Everybody's indifferent. We lose stability point. Five legitimacy. And that should unlock volunteers, and we should make... We should get a lot of manpower, hopefully. That's the idea. Level 2 requires Grand Army, Professional Army, or Standing Army ideas. And that gives plus 50% times state reach base manpower. So if we don't get a lot from that one, this one would give a lot. And it also requires a lot. We've taken another Japanese province. At this rate, we're going to take so many provinces from Japan that they're not going to have any provinces to get manpower from. I mean, technically, I could conquer... Japan is an island, so that's within my rules, but... If I was 100% only coastal, like... 80% of Japan is coastal, so I could take the majority of Japan even if I was only taking coastal provinces. My income did increase to uh, 117, so that's good. I'm going to see how much manpower we get next year, and then I'll probably end this part. Hopefully it's at least like 30,000. If it's not, I'm going to be disappointed, and I can't really do much with like an additional like 10,000. It's not really that much of a difference, so... Hopefully it's a lot. How much? Five thousand. Damn, that is extremely disappointing. I said ten thousand wasn't that much, and we got half of what I said wasn't that much, so it's that much. It's not that much cut in half. It's half of not that much. Which is double not that much. Alright, well, I'm going to end this part here. and um... oh, That also requires rank 3 of this, too. Which, I, I can do this one. So, I'll at least do this one. This one requires another mill group 
No, this one requires two mill groups. Yeah, that one requires two mill groups. Because that is Grand Army, Professional, or Standing. So, okay, if I wanted to do Grand Army or Professional Army, that would require another group. I could just do Standing Army. So Standing Army would have fulfilled both of those then. That's unfortunate that I went quality. Yeah, because Standing Army... Standing Army wouldn't have made my army any better, though. I might just swap those out. If I get to a point where my manpower is still this low, then I'll probably just do a one-for-one -one exchange standing army for quality. Because it's not like I used quality to like build a bunch of ships or anything. So I don't think that would... Personally, I don't think that would be that bad. I don't know about you guys, but um, just to move things along... And then I would keep standing army afterwards. But uh, I'm going to end this part here and pick up the next part. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.